the FIA World Rallycross Championship has, without a doubt, the best collection of racing drivers in the world. And sitting proudly at the top of that pile is Johan Christofferson, back-to-back -back champions. No one can touch you. It feels good. Yeah, it feels very good. It feels very good. I'm really, if I could choose any sport or any motorsport, let's say, and uh, in any team, any car, I would be exactly where I am. So yeah, I'm, I'm a very happy man. I was at the final round in Buxtehude and you know what amazed me is that championships wrapped up but you've got this, this fight in you, this hunger to win at all costs. Uh, where does that come from? I think, I mean, from the bottom, I mean, since I was really, really young, I started to compete in everything. I mean, in everything. The jump into the car, put the seat back on fastest, like run to run over the crossroad, whatever it was. I was competing in everything. And Were I, you a second child in a family? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you always, okay, yeah. that, that makes so, sense. <laughs> yeah, so I, I always been competitive. And then, you know, to, to really try, like, if we say Buxtehude, it's been a racetrack, but I've never succeeded before. I've never been in the final. So I really, I, I came there as a champion last year and I messed up that weekend. So this year when I arrived as a champion, I was like, okay, now I'm really going to do 100% focusing on this event, try to, to make it as good as possible. Because it's going to be, because I always do the good preparation before the weekend. And going to Buxtehude with good preparation is going to be the actual black and white if am I doing the stuff that I'm doing before, is it giving anything or not? So I did all the preparations I could and I was able to win the event, so that meant a lot to me. That is important because you know, winning a championship may be easy, but it's maintaining that position at the top that is really difficult and I think it's that precision, that dedication. I mean, you've also broken a record that had been standing. I think 2016, Andreas Buckerud had the perfect weekend. You've gone and done that this season. You have to be 100% motivated to do all the work that it takes to, to, to be able to stay on the top after a season like last year. A season like last year was also record-breaking in, in some terms. But anyway, you know, to, to come back and try to defend the title and, and do it actually even better with the highest level of competition that's ever been in Rallycross is it, it takes a lot of hard work, but it also takes a, a good team around me, which I'm feeling 100% comfortable with. with They're always delivering a perfect car for me, and, and to have Petter as a teammate to, to share the information with is very important. Look, I, I think that, that is really cool. There's a transition in World Rallycross at the moment from the old style Peter Solberg way of driving to your more circuit focused almost precision but a lot you can learn from a, a wily old fox like Peter. Yeah for sure I mean he have a lot of experience back from the rally he have a good car knowledge to, to know how to set up the car and to feeling for the car what can make it even faster in terms of the gravel and, and rally style and I'm a little bit more of looking into the data and, and try to optimize the car for that specific track. So we are working very well together and putting all these things together in one big uh, you know, pot and try to, to make the best out of it has been working very, very good. And as you say, I mean, the old style of driving a little bit is, is outgoing. And this is because of also the Relicos tracks is going more towards uh, circuit racing in terms of tarmac and, and concrete instead of, instead of, of gravel. Is that a good thing? Uh, I think it's pluses and minus. I mean, I also like the gravel, and, and you know, it it mixes up the the driving style a little bit more. Uh, the bad thing with, with gravel is that uh, when the cars are so dynamic in terms of suspension and so on, like it is nowadays, and also have all the power that we have, it digs the big holes in the in the gravel, and it makes the car break down in terms of punctures and so on. So. I think it's too many cars on one race weekend to, to have a lot of gravel. If we have less cars and limited of driving, I think we could have more gravel. Yeah, I suppose that was before it became this global series, that is why you could have it. So I, I get that. But it wasn't always motor racing for you. I mean, you didn't grow up and say that's what you want to do. You, you went to cross country skiing, long laugh, as the Germans would call it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I mean, that was because of that. That was my father was doing racing when, when I was young. Yeah. Uh, so when I grew up in a service park, his free time was actually to doing uh, uh, cross-country skiing. 
And as competitive person as I was, I went straight into, okay, let's be the best in, in, in cross country skiing. So when I was six, seven years old, I was before going to school, I was in the, in the garden doing cross country skiing, you know, seven o'clock in the morning. So I always been quite driven and try to, to maximize what I'm doing. And I did that 100% until I was 19, 20 years old. So I made it up to the top in juniors in Sweden. Yeah. And then I started with circuit racing when my father stopped his, his racing career. So that was the first time for me there was an opportunity to race myself and I get stuck from there. Yeah, and I mean, it's the end of the season, final round, going into the winter break. Things are intense on a race weekend. There are interviews like this happening all the time. What, is, what does Johan do to get away and, and de-stress? Yeah, it's it's really busy. I mean, I, I'm not all I'm not only doing the rallycross. I also do circuit racing in Sweden. So I'm doing like 20 race weekends a year, and on top of that, I, I during the winter time I try to keep me up to pace with, with rallying in Sweden on snow. So actually, the weekend after I arrive back home, uh, I will go straight for testing in circuit racing. <laughs> so you actually relax and unwind strapped into another race car? Yeah, exactly. So I have 220 plus uh, travel days a year. So it is a lot, but I think that's also, again, the mentality that I took from cross country skiing, that I have the more practice I can do, the better driver I become. And as long as I will do motorsport, I will do 110%. And when I stop, I stop. What is it about growing up in the Scandinavian countries that makes you guys such good drivers? Is it the wet, dodgy conditions? Because there's a lot of fantastic drivers that come from your area. Yes, especially in, in I think, like off-road racing or like more rally and dirt and rallycross and so on. And uh, I think, I mean, we used to say in, in the region where I live, which is quite in the forest in Sweden, so if you are two friends, you do rally, you are driver and co-driver. If you are four friends, you do a music band. Okay. So that's normally like, what's... Like Ebba. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that, that's how it used to, used to be. But uh, yeah, I started to, to drive a car when I was six years old. So... Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, and just to, just to wrap up, um, where to for, for next year? Um, championship number three, as committed, as dedicated? Yeah, I'm 100% motivated to do another year in Rallycross, uh, but it's not clear yet what I will do next year. So it depends a little bit what's happening with Rallycross, Porsche was pulling out and so on. So it's a little bit uh, shaky days for the Rallycross, but we will see how it goes. I mean, if folks are going to stay in the sport and I will be one of the drivers there, for sure the, the championship will be the target. But um, still the, the doors for circuit racing and other sports are, are a little bit, on the, little bit open, but we'll see how it goes.